This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Combs. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 9, Episode 6, brought to you by the Rick Snyder's Washington Network. And I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. And we're back discussing all things Washington sports and life as part of the mighty Rick Snyder's Network on YouTube. So please like, share, subscribe, comment, and hit the thanks button, that little dollar sign, so Mac can, you know, have a Merry Christmas. I would like to supersize my meal. I mean, I'm not giving you any of it, but it sounds good. It so. sounds good. Okay, yeah, you're going right. to use me as the guinea pig to get paid. All right, so instead of taunting people like I usually do, make you tease and wait, none of you are going to do that. So we picked the game right away on this segment every Thursday, and I, last week, was 1-0, picked them by four, and was right, had the under two. Uh, so I'm going to go again, Washington 20, Denver 17. I actually like that number, 21-17. I kind of uh, like that. I, I'm price sorry. Price. I'm sorry. I'm not adding to the drama, but I, I, I honestly think it's going to come down to maybe probably a field goal game, like yeah. last drive type field goal. All right, play the Price is Right game. They'll bid me by a dollar. That's fine. There you go. So Chase Young, I'm not Chase. Yeah, Chase Montez is wet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Versus Montez. I mean, Chase is probably not playing in this game. They wouldn't say for sure. We missed the opener. He has that stinger in the neck. You know, I hate to second guess players about injuries and, and pain levels and all that. And a stinger in your neck, hey, I don't know. Maybe the doctor's saying, well, I know what doctors are saying. It wouldn't hurt to wait. Doctors always say that. You know, at patience and time, that's that's fine. I don't blame them. And hey, you don't want anybody having a serious neck injury, which could be leading to other things. So that said, if they say we need to see him practice, why do they got to see him practice for two weeks? Why can't they just go look at him in a day or two? And they always, there's always something going on with this stuff. Yeah. You know? So, uh, you know, at the end of the year, they'll have to make a decision. Do they re-sign Sweat or Montez? I mean, Montez Sweat or, or Chase? And to me, it's a no-brainer. You go for Montez. I mean, he's yeah. been there pretty much regularly. You know, he was an impact player again. He played well yesterday. Um, I'm sorry, on Sunday. So, I think he's been a steady. He's a first-round pick, too. If people yeah. forget that. And that's a guy that you went up to get. Let's not forget. They traded back into the first round to get him. And, yeah, I mean, look at it. Montez Sweat has been more durable than Chase Young. There's no doubt about it. We don't know for sure that Mon that, that Chase is back fully recovered from the, in from the knee injury. Knee injuries can hamper a guy for the rest of his career, and he suffered it in his second year. You know, it, it, it's – it's a, it's a no-brainer. Look, I, I, Montez Sweat wreaked havoc Sunday. He was, you know, him, Payne, and Allen, those three were just – it's a bad Cardinals team. We'll, we'll say it. It's a bad Cardinals team. But those three guys are the reason that they won that game, you know, and the secondary. The, the secondary gets a lot of credit for it as well. But those three guys were, were the main reason that we won that game. So I, at this point, it's a no brainer. I would honestly, Rick, see what you can get for chase on the market. You clearly need an offensive lineman. You clearly need a tight end that can actually catch the ball. Um, just throw it out there. You know, like you said, there's always going to be another coach in the league that thinks that they can get the best out of him and fix him and get it. Whatever, whatever is wrong with him, get it fixed. You know, I, you've, you've mentioned Mike Tomlin has had his eyes on chase young since he came into the league. See what the Steelers have. See if they want to come up off of an offensive lineman or a tight end. You know, maybe you send him somewhere else. Just see if you can get something for him. Don't don't be caught empty-handed at the end of the season where you don't have the number two overall pick or anything in compensation for him. Here's the question. who, are you, Which position are you trying to grab? I mean, Nick Gates has looked okay at center. Um, I didn't see anything wrong with Sadiq Charles, at least at left guard, and Cosme at right guard. You're, you could like to upgrade your tackles, but what tackle are we talking about, Leno? Or, yeah, or... I think you got to go left tackle and Cosme. Uh, what, didn't Cosme get banged up on Sunday? I mean, that guy uh, just doesn't seem doesn't seem to stay healthy. Yeah, but I mean, are you? Who, they're not going to replace the right tackle. They just got as a free agent. Yeah, he, not allow that. 
So I'd love to say, yeah, let's upgrade off something, but I don't know how they're going to do it right away. I, and then the weird part, I mean, I gave up six sacks, and some of that was on Sam, because Sam really did hold the ball too long, too often. And he was telegraphing once. He almost got picked off twice more. Mm -hmm. the, the one sack where he throws a ball away, basically, and it's a touchdown. That was like a pick six. You know, I mean, I think Sam did an okay job, but I think the line, it wasn't as bad as it looked. What they didn't do very well, though, was the running lanes. Man, they didn't do well at all on mm -hmm. the running and that's usually the other way around. The teams are better run blockers than they are pass blockers. Um, I just don't know how they fix this in time. Uh, you know, next year, man, you you know, you want to get first rounder, hopefully on a, uh, you know, an offensive tackle. But look at the Raiders just let go of a guy offensive tackle they drafted two, three years ago. And and Washington really wanted him. You know, Raiders beat them to him. Uh, so it's, it's a difficult process with all of this. But I agree that if somebody – like, listen, the Lachey trade for Jay Schrader happened in late August. Mm -hmm. You know, Lachey had just been traded from San Diego to L.A. like four days earlier. And then they flipped him over to get a quarterback, you know, a starting quarterback. You know, so you can it's never too early to do that kind of thing. It's just the NFL has become so conservative. They don't like to take a chance on anything and on this. So. But I would say this, that the defensive line is probably one of the strongest units on this team, aside from probably wide receiver. You you can give up. Chase Young is not producing anything. He's not giving you anything on Sunday. So, you know, you got John Ridgeway. You've got, you've got other guys that can fill in. Are they Chase Young? No. But then again, is this the Chase Young that we saw that they drafted a couple years ago? Is this the Chase Young that won rookie of the year? Is this Chase Young that was supposed to be the next Aaron Donald? We don't know, and probably not. Yeah, but they, you know, I think they're doing okay without Chase. That doesn't mean if if Chase is really Chase that he couldn't help them be even better. But it's you know they invested a lot in that D line. It may be time to to pull it back a little. They've re-signed two of them and probably re-signed Sweat. So the question I wonder is who's carrying the defense in the end? Is it the line, which played pretty reasonably well? Or the secondary, which I thought did exceptionally well. I thought Cameron Curl played like an all-pro. I think Derek Forrest played like a pro bowler yesterday. Those two guys were out there. And the corners were fine, too. So the back five has been playing their end of this mm -hmm. as much as the front four. And they're always a symbiotic relationship. What happens if the front four isn't that good? Then they can pick on the secondary more. But if the secondary is really good, the D-line gets more time to, to penetrate. And I think it was more of the latter. I, I think that the secondary played well enough to um, to allow the defensive line time to get to the quarterback to create sacks and, and fumbles and stuff. So, um, yeah, because, I mean, honestly, if you really want to talk about it, Sunday, James Conner looked like the second coming of Barry Sanders against this defensive line. That, that offensive line was opening holes for him, and he was running all over the place. I don't know why the Cardinals ever attempted to throw the ball, but – I think that I think the secondary is the stronger unit right now. Yeah, and then Jamin Davis actually played okay. I didn't notice Cody Barton. Uh, well, and and the thing is, realistically, too, you got to look at the defensive line like this. You you've got you've got a guy like Mathis who's coming back from an injury that you've drafted in the second round. You've got uh uh you know a couple guys that are a part of that rotation that are still probably trying to figure things out. So. I could see the secondary because the secondary for the most part, aside from Emmanuel Forbes, um, has pretty much been the same unit for the past couple seasons. You know, we Forrest had his rise last year. Curl had his rise a couple years ago. Um, you know, Kendall Fuller that he's been here. So <clears throat> I think that, I think that secondary unit is more, is a more of a cohesive unit right now. And, and, and the, the D line will catch up. We know, this defensive line is very good. In a defensive huddle yesterday, Montez Sweat repeatedly kept yelling, who's going to be the closer? Yelling at his other teams, who's making the next big play? And then Deron Bain made a couple in a row, and then John Allen made a huge sack on a third down. You know, And then Sweat played his end, too. So they were, like, challenging each other. Yeah. Who's going to hit? You know, Montez kind of scares me a little, man. His kind of intensity, ooh, you don't want to be on the wrong end of that. And wasn't that a guy with a heart condition coming out of college? He needs to calm it down a little bit sometimes. But, you know, he's emerging. I mean, John Allen, leader of this defense, no doubt. 
but he's not as vocal. And Montez is. My Montez talks crap all the time in practice of these guys. He's always tormenting the offense mm -hmm. too much sometimes. Like, hey man, you're starting to hurt my feelings. I mean, it gets that kind of crazy. But but you know, Montez has really grown into his role. Every year he's gotten better, just like I think Deron Payne every year has gotten better. Uh, and these guys are leading. You know, your defense leaders really need to be your linemen. Uh, because you're bigger than everybody else and you follow the big guy into battle. Um, and, and they've done that. So it's been pretty impressive. Well, yeah. Let's not also forget this is a contract year for Montez Sweat. Of course, he's going to be pumped up. And, you know, look, Payne got paid. Allen got paid. They want to see their boy get paid. So, of course, they're going to push him. Big question. Are you worried about the deep snapper all of a sudden? Cameron Cheeseman has a new grip that hmm. he's been on this year. It hasn't gone very well. I want to go go to the old crib, you know. And yeah, the, the the cheese is uh the cheese. Oof. If it wasn't for a Pro Bowl bunner, <laughs> um, yeah. If it if it wasn't for the snap for the holder, uh, yeah. I don't I don't know if those two field goals go through. Yeah, the cheese stands alone there. I mean, it's kind of weird. I've known I I always like long snappers. I've liked the guys that they've had, like Trevor Maddich and Dan Turk from the past. And, and then uh, Sunberg. The last... Sunberg was a yeah, he, he was, was a great person. Yeah, he was there like ten years. Yep. Uh, and I'm not sure why they ever changed off of him because uh, I didn't see a problem. Because he wanted a him. he wanted a million dollars more, and Danny wouldn't give it to him. I guess it was it was crazy on that. So to me, Cheese, I, I think he gets he gets enough rope to hang himself, which means they'll keep going as long as it doesn't cost them a game. Yeah. Like, game they're gonna they're, and he's a draft pick even you know, know. So they have to do that well now, here's a luckily tressway is catching those those you know those kinks for him but yes uh he was definitely stinky g's on sunday who well how is sam how better scripted or unscripted on plays oh completely off yeah when he goes off script and keeps those feet moving and he generates you know he he gets his guys open you know, he, he, you could see for a guy that only started his second game on Sunday, I was very impressed, you know, his second regular season NFL game. I was pretty impressed. His footwork is impressive. Does he hold on the ball a little bit? Maybe. Does he try to make something out of nothing too many times? Maybe there was a, there were a couple throws that probably should have been intercepted and the, the touchdown to Brian Robinson, I, I don't know many quarterbacks that have played for this team that would have made that throw, let alone completed it for a touchdown. I mean, you know, we know we know Heineke was the gunslinger. Heineke was the the off the script guy. I don't even know if Heineke would have thrown that ball because you had to put some zip on that thing, and and he did. Yeah, he's you know he's got the arm strength, especially on the run. He has the arm strength, but he was the first Redskins Commanders quarterback to run and throw for a touchdown since Jay Schrader. Wow. Uh, I was like, wow. Cause that would have been, I think that would have been like, well, let's see. That what was about I, Rob. You would figure Robert had that stat. Yeah. I, I was surprised. I saw it in the notes. <laughs> okay. All right. So in our time remaining, what else do we have to talk about? Um, nothing. So, nothing. All right. Well, we already, we already made the pick, right? Yeah. 20. I, I guess we'll go, you go 2017. I'll go. I, you know what? Let's make it 17, 14 for me. All right, there you go. You can get the under. I haven't seen the over. I know Denver's favored by three and a half. Wow. I mean, like, what? yeah, that's kind of weird. So what's that, a six and a half point swing? Because doesn't the road team usually get three on the road? Yeah. Yeah, so I I was surprised. I think Denver is going to be an underwhelming team this year in a, in a tough division. Uh, well, Denver's also a team that can't stay healthy. I mean, Jerry Judy's banged up again. I mean, that's a that's a potential Pro Bowl wide receiver every year, and he can't stay healthy. <laughs> yeah. I got home in time. I usually get home in time to see the Sunday night game, which <laughs> you think I'd have enough football for the day. But um, You mean the Sunday night snooze fest? Man, I mean, I sat there and said, I, I don't really like watching Dallas against the Giants because that's a, like watching two of your enemies fight each other, and you don't really care who wins. Um and, and I turned it on late, and it was, I don't know, 20 to nothing. I was like, ooh, okay, don't have to watch this one. But the famous part, a friend of mine covers the Giants, and I said to him, wouldn't it be something if Danny Dimes had a great year on, for his contract, and then it goes back to being who he was, and now you've got to eat a huge contract? 
And well, one game in, that's sure. That was worked. the I said that last night on or on Sunday night on Twitter. I said, "Man, I'm so glad they paid him." Man. I just thought, wow. You we know, know and, and Rick, the funniest thing out of all of it was, I think it was like Saturday night or Saturday afternoon, they announced the uh, contract extension for former Redskins kicker Graham Gano. He goes out there, his first <laughs> kick is blocked and returned for a touchdown. His second uh, 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 field goal attempt, I believe he missed, he shakes it to the left. I mean, what is it with the New York Giants players getting new contracts and going out there just sucking? <laughs> I just laughed at that one. I was most impressed by Detroit. I mean, yeah. I'm watching the first quarter of that game, and I'm like, they're not afraid here. Nope. They're gone. And Kansas City probably takes a step back a little. You know, they lost some people. I wondered if Eric Bieniemy was yelling at his TV Thursday night about it, whatever. Well, you know? and let's let's be honest. Chris Jones didn't play. Travis Kelsey didn't play. That's a different game in, say, October, November with those two guys playing. I but, just yeah, thought- I mean, hey, look, the Lions – the Lions are the epitome of their head coach, Dan Campbell. That dude is balls to the wall, does not care. He, he, he you, you are not going to run through him, and that's. I feel like that team is his identity. You know what I mean? He gets. They were talking about it yesterday. He goes to a coffee shop before he starts work, and he gets like double shot latte, something or other. I don't drink coffee. They said it was basically equivalent to ten Red Bulls. Oh my god. I mean, like, this dude's going to drop that on the sideline. You know, the back of the can of a Red Bull says, don't drink more than three in a day. Wow. And I <laughs> got it either. So I just saw that and said, wow. Just like something that uh, Dunkin' Donuts sells, or Dunkin's, whatever, this drink that they have, it says it's equal to 17 donuts. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Man, talk about sugar rush. So people out there are stimulating. As someone who had a heart attack at 42, I don't recommend pushing your luck. <laughs> but and man. I just turned 41 next or last week, so I'm trying to make it to 42 with no heart attacks. I I just laugh. I mean, 10 Red Bulls is like roid rage or something like that. I know. No wonder there's so many angry people on the roads in the morning. Yeah, that's they're all, they're all hopped up on Duncan and 10 Red Bulls. Yeah. All right, we're out of here. Well, I'm that's ready. good. We'll wake up. So, anyway, I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Cohn. 